Hi guys and welcome back. So last time I have made a video about the bookshelf behind me, which is a Stephen King bookshelf. And today I wanted to do a whole tour of my fiction bookshelf, so mostly novels, which is the bookshelf behind me and also one in downstairs in the living room. And then I will make a second uh, bookshelf tour, which is only focused on non-fiction, school books, medical books, psychology, everything that all other books that I have outside of fiction. So that would be another video, but for now I will focus only on fiction and the bookshelves behind me. So let's get started. I'm not going to explain all of my Stephen King books because I do have a video about them. But recently I did purchase some new books uh, to my collection. I have this Green Mile, uh, which I recently purchased and it's in Dutch. And I try not to buy Stephen King books in Dutch anymore because I like to read them in English. But this one is a uh, limited edition and I... Uh, I really liked it. That's one of the newer ones. And then also I found my copy of the Pet Cemetery in Spanish, which is Cemeteria de Animales. I lost it when I was filming my Stephen King shelf. Yeah, now I have it again. I haven't read it. Uh, it's still a little bit too difficult in Spanish. And I also have purchased the first book of the, yeah, the Gwen <laughs> Gwendy's Button Box uh, trilogy. Uh, I read this one on my e-reader, but I wanted to have it for my collection. So now I have both books uh, from the trilogy and I'm only missing the last one. And that's it for the Stephen King. So we will move on to the main bookshelf. On top of it, I have all kinds of small figurines and a plant. Uh, not all figurines are mine, some of my husband's and... I have a couple of book collections. Here we have a couple of novellas by um, Tolkien. I think this is a very beautiful edition of the books, the Tolkien Treasury. And it contains some of his uh, stories, uh, Tom Bombadil uh, and a couple of others. So I still have to read this one. I gave this present to my husband, so uh, but I would like to read it myself. And Tom Bombadil is the only one that I'm really familiar with. And then I have another one, which is uh, this one and contains The Hobbit and the Trilogy of the Lord Rings. I just find this collection very beautiful, but um, I'm not reading from it because I want to keep them nice. But they look very pretty and um, yeah, the leather cover is very soft. And then I have my first season of Sailor Moon. So this is one until six and it only introduces the Sailor Scouts and not the like the Sailor Senshi or whatever. I still have to read it. I read the first one and as a kid I watched uh, most of the seasons. But yeah, it's one of my favorite animes and I wanted to have it. And I have this one, I got it from my husband and I have it in English. But I would like to purchase uh, the rest of the series in Japanese. But it's very hard to find. So for now, um, I have only this one. And here I have all of my horror books. So this row until the end. And then I have the literature shelves, uh, which are these two rows going down. And then the last uh, row is uh, Tolkien. Uh, fantasy, science fiction, history, and the whole down row is all Japanese, but also divided into literature, more history kind of books, and more horror and weird. There is a logic <laughs> behind the bookshelves, but um, yeah, I still have too little space, so it's not entirely how I want it to be. But for now, we have to make it work. So we will start with this one. So these ones are more the horror classics. We have here an edition of Dracula and also older stories. That's why it's so big. Then I have Daphne du Maurier, uh, Mary Shelley with Frankenstein. And I really like this edition. I think a Penguin Deluxe. Yeah, I like this cartoon cover. I have uh, a special edition of Shirley Jackson. It's a collection of all of her works. Then I have her stories separate as well. I have the lottery and older stories. We have always lived in the castle, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And also the haunting of Hill House. I read all of them. Then I have the crucible by Arthur Miller. I read it last year. Ray Bradbury, the Halloween tree. I want to read it this Halloween. I think it's just a one day read. Uh, it's a children's story. I like Ray Bradbury's writing, so um, I'm quite excited. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, this bookshelf is kind of packed, as you can see. I have another uh, recent purchase, which is also by Ray Bradbury, uh, which is Dandelion Wine. It's one of his most intimate works about his childhood, as I understand. I don't know if it's on the right place on a horror shelf, but for now, I try to keep all the Ray Bradbury's uh, books together. And then I will just 
put it here. I have the uncensored uh, picture of Dorian Gray, but I haven't read uh, Dorian Gray yet. I hope to read it in October. I said it multiple times now, but um, I still didn't come around to start reading it. So I still have to do that. Um, this is the normal edition and I also have the uncensored edition. And I will first start out with the normal edition, I think. And I have also a copy of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein in Dutch. Uh, this is the one that I first started to read uh, years ago, but I didn't finish it. And now I want to read it in English. So, but I also have this copy. This one is Rosemary's Baby um, by Ira Levin. With an introduction by Chuck Palahniuk. Both authors that I still want to read and haven't read yet. So hopefully soon. The Collector by John Fowlers. Uh, Wilkie Collins, The Woman in White, and my copy of the Dorian Gray. Then I have Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I love this book. So poetical, so nicely written. And it is a children's story, but you wouldn't say that it is. Um, I, I think children's stories nowadays are less complex than this one. I have also The Interview with the Vampire, but then in Dutch by Anne Rice. And uh, I haven't started the series yet, so... I think I'm going to read this book and if I like it, then I will purchase the entire series. But for now, I don't know if I would like it or not. I do hear a lot of good things about it. Then in the back, I have Lovecraft, <laughs> the Necromonicon and just uh, older stories by Lovecraft. I have a, a complete edition of Edgar Allan Poe's writing, but then in Dutch. Uh, this is also Edgar Allan Poe and again Lovecraft, some horror story compilations, mostly Lovecraft of Ed or Edgar Allan Poe. So, that's the back shelf. Okay, then moving down. These are also horror books and thrillers. And there's also one non-fiction in here. I have The History of Horror by Christopher Freiling. The Diary of Frankenstein. I haven't read it yet, but I think I will read, read it after I have read Frankenstein uh, entirely. The Philosophy of Horror. I'm very excited for this one. The Paradoxes of the Heart by Noel Carroll. I had this book in my possession for quite some time but I didn't come around to read it. Then I have multiple books I think by Patricia Cornwell. I have never read any of her work but I did have this edition. Dead Mountain it's a non-fiction about the Dyatlov Pass in Russia where hikers went missing. I love this book. It's a 5 out of 5 for me. Um, really good and if you like suspenseful non-fiction I would uh, definitely uh, recommend this one. Then I have a non-fiction about uh, the serial killer Shikatilo, uh, and a Russian serial killer. I have not read this one. The Fisherman, I read this one recently and it's such a good book. It's like a legend filled with horror and dark fantasy and also just literary writing. So the writing is amazing, uh, <laughs> but also the story itself, it's uh, very suspenseful. Then another non-fiction about Chernobyl, Mid Midnight in Chernobyl. Uh, I still have to read this one. Caroline, this one is by Neil Gaiman. It's a children's story, but uh, it's very popular and I wanted to read it. As a child, I really loved uh, horror stories <laughs> and I still do. Um, but And I think as a child, I would have loved this book, but I didn't know it. So I read it as an adult and uh, it's fine. It's nice, but as an adult, it's, it's different than as a child to read something like that. Uh, then Mariana Enriquez, The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. It's a compilation of horror short stories. I really enjoyed her writing and I think her older books I would like to read in Spanish. So for now I haven't purchased anything older from her. Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, it's very high on my list to start reading it, but it's uh, still quite a big book. So um, for now I have all the things to read. Then The Cabin and the End of the War by uh, Paul Tremblay. This one I want to read as soon as possible because the movie is coming out or maybe it's already out. I don't know, but uh, I wanted to read the book before I watched the movie. Good Neighbors by Sarah Langen. This one I just purchased after reading The Fisherman because he mentioned her writing and the end of the book. And uh, I first thought maybe it's his wife, but I think I think I do think they're related, but I couldn't find it uh, for now. Uh, maybe it's his sister. I don't know. Maybe they just have the same name. But uh, she also writes horror stories and I wanted to read Good Neighbors. It's one of her most famous works. And in the back I have Thomas Harris, Joe Nespo. Uh, I did read The Silence of the Lamb in Dutch. Uh, and this is the edition that I've read. Um, I have never read anything from Joe Nespo. 
I was excited about the snowman, but then I watched the movie and I didn't really enjoy it. So I hope the book is better. I also have some books on serial killers and uh, other books from Thomas Harris. One book by Joe Hill, which I still have to read. The Alien is by Caleb Carr. Carp, Caleb Carp, let me see. And also The Case Against Satan by Ray Russell, really good book. The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. Both interesting reads, so I would recommend this ones. And the last one is Penball by uh, Dayton Auerbach. I read this one last year, gave it five stars. It's uh, very suspenseful and uh, I think well written for the first book. So you have to realize that it was uh, his first novel and he started the novel out as short stories, which he put online on Reddit. Keeping that in mind, I think it's a really good book. Of course, there are some critics about the writing style, but um, I enjoyed it. Then moving a shelf down. Here I have my whole collection of Charmed. It's not the complete collection, but I used to collect Charmed books because I love the series. And I also have a couple of X-File books, which I also really liked, uh, the series at least. And also some um, X-Files comics <laughs> and my edition of the, the Blair Witch Project, which is also just like a guide to the movie. Uh, so these are all movie related books and i also have the signature of shannon doherty who has played uh, peru hollowell one of my favorite characters of charm and i've not read all of the charm books but um most of them i did and it's just like a guilty pleasure to read and one more recent purchase was um let me show you this like pop-up book that i really liked don't go out tonight it's uh like a children's horror book uh, that you can pop uh, pop out and then it looks like this so it's uh i really liked it so that's why i bought it but um i haven't read it yet the story and these are the x-file comics that i have only three i bought them in the book fair in uh, the netherlands and yeah they're really nice. Uh, they're still in plastic. I want to keep them nice, but um, I haven't read them. And then the last shelf uh, in this row is all Japanese books that are horror related or just weird or uh, very dark. So you can mishimize also in here because I know his books can be quite dark. Uh, this one I have read, Sailor Who Fell From Grace With The Sea, quite a long title. It was a very good book, but very dark and depressing. Um, and uh, yeah, very sadistic as well, I found it. So uh, I thought it would be perfect for this row of horror. Then I have a couple of uh, mangas, uh, which are entirely not horror related. But yeah, this is uh, Chin Chain, Yotsuba, and also this one. I still haven't figured out uh, what kind of manga this is. Uh, it kind of looks like a horror related or maybe adventure related manga. And I bought this one when I was like, uh, I think 13, 14 years old. And I thought at that time that it was a Chinese book. I bought it. I knew nothing about Japanese language and uh, I never later looked into it because yeah, I couldn't understand anything. And just recently I found out that I had a Japanese manga from years ago. So yeah, it turned out it wasn't Chinese. Um, and I think this is not the first book, but yeah, hopefully I will read it. Uh, someday uh it doesn't contain much furigana so um it's uh it's for now it's a little bit difficult to read yotsuba i almost finished and chin chen i bought in japan but haven't read it and then i have uh akutagawa about the hell like uh, the Volteria, the torments of the hell i think is the title in english i don't know this is the dutch edition and i thought it also is fitting for uh, a horror show and Kazuo Ichiguro, which is not, I think, horror, but maybe also dark. So for now, it's uh, in here. And another book by Kazuo Ichiguro as well. Then Paprika by uh, Yusutaka Tsutsui. It's uh, a weird book. Um, as I understand, more science fiction, but I think there are also horror elements. I still have to read it, though. And Osamu Dazai, uh, Self-Portraits. I have read this one. 
and it's just his like essay fiction uh, writing but also biography essays like mixed with fiction I have read it it's quite depressing and uh, yeah something that we would expect of course from Osamu Dazai's writing and I still have to read uh, No Longer Human by him uh, then I have some Totoro cards then Ryu Murakami from Fatherland with Love uh, I haven't read this one but it's one of his more uh, bigger books but I have read all the books from him and I really like his writing but it's also very dark and it contains a lot of violence most of his books then uh, Supernatural Japan so it's more like an art book but because it contains ghosts and demons I uh, put it on the shelf and it's just information about the paintings from um, Japanese famous painters that have used Japanese mythology about the yokais and yure and uh, oni which are all terms about uh, the supernatural so yeah I still have to read it or go through it but uh, it's a very beautiful addition in my opinion then uh, in the back I have this one's uh, Black Rain. This one is about uh, the atomic bomb that uh, fell in Japan on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, I don't know much about the book, but I think it would be a difficult read. Um, very emotional and I'm still looking forward to read it, but I haven't found the time to pick it up. And I have also the manga uh, from No Longer Human in Japanese This is this one. Um, it's quite difficult to read because it's based on No Longer Human from Osami Dosai. But this one is uh, drawn by uh, Junji Ito, which is a really good horror manga artist. And I would like to read the manga. I have this one in English as well um, while reading No Longer Human, the book. And maybe I will also try to read the Japanese edition. But for now, I haven't uh, touched it yet. I bought this one in Japan as well. And it's the first volume, so there are multiple volumes. I only have this one. Then a book by Natsuo Kirino. I haven't read anything yet by this writer, so um, hopefully it's good. But for now, um, it's still in the bag, <laughs> uh, waiting for me to pick it up. Then I have Koji Suzuki, um, The Ring and Spiral, which are uh, books in the Ring series. I still have to read Loop, and there's another one, I think. But I like uh, these books, especially The Ring. It's one of my favorite uh, horror books from Japan. It's very weird, totally different from the movies. And um, yeah, I really liked reading it. I will show you the rest of the bag as well. Let me pick this one up. Um, then I have his short story collection called Dark Water. And so far I've read The Ring in, I think, October 2021 and The Spiral. Uh, part 2 I have read in uh, October 2022, so hopefully Dark Water then in 2023. Then I have short stories by Edogawa Rampo. Uh, these are also uh, horror short stories or like yeah, scary stories. And the writer is quite famous for his uh, short stories. I read it years ago, so I forgot most of the stories I think, but it was a nice read. Then I have uh, Lefkadio Hearn, Kwaidan. These are also horror short stories and I read the first two, I think. And I really like Lafcadio's writing style, but um, yeah, I still have to finish the rest. Then Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Now this is again, not really horror, but because her writing is so weird and some of her books do touch like the horror genre, I put it in here. Uh, this one is very interesting and funny, but also and um, it starts out quite funny. Uh, for, for so far I can remember I read it I think in 2020 but then it gets um, quite soon it gets really uneasy uh, and also just just sad it's a very sad book because you're reading about someone who is not fitting into the society and really trying to avoid and like live in isolation but still functioning uh, kind of but a lot of people are like uh, trying to make her fit in which is not um, a thing that she wants or is able to achieve so um, very interesting to read and then her second book is Earthlings which is more like a horror genre and this one I really liked except the ending the ending was very even to, for me it was too weird um, uh, while the rest of the book is, was quite well written, um, but I didn't really like the ending. And then I have Coin Locker Babies by Ryu Murakami. Still have to read that one. Piercing. This one I have read. Uh, it was quite good, but not very memorable. 
and then in the miso soup uh, so this one I really liked it was well written and just very suspenseful and it was the first book that I've read from him uh, Tokyo Decadence which are short stories some of them are uh, like very uh, sexual but others are again very uh, sadistic so uh, it's, yeah that's his style I didn't really like the short uh, story compilations there are 15 stories in here but yeah most of them I don't remember except a couple ones but it's um, I wouldn't really recommend it and then his book uh, audition this is a really good one so this one I would recommend to anyone it's about this man that is trying to find his future wife uh, his uh, late wife died um, and he hasn't been dating for a while but then everyone is like around him pushing him to go on in the dating world again yeah he sets up this audition because he's a movie director so um, all these women come by for the audition and they think they will audition for the movie but uh, obviously he wants to find a wife one woman stands out and then things uh, turn out not as he wants them or not as he had expected so really good book so yeah there are still a lot of books in here that i would really like to read soon and uh, there are still a lot of other horror writers that i uh, haven't read and really looking forward to but yeah i just have to find the time and i don't have a lot of manga so that's why these are uh, these ones are in here but obviously they don't really belong in the horror genre but for now i will keep them there then we are going into the literature row, which is uh, from here until there, and also the second row. And here I have most of my Spanish books, so books in Spanish. I think this one also will belong in horror one day, but for now I haven't read it, so I just give it with all of my Spanish books. These ones are all from the same publisher. Uh, this one is not in Spanish. Um, but yeah, it's uh, in here as well. And these two are also in Spanish. This tree just came recently in my possession. I got them as a gift from my father. And uh, I hope that my Spanish will improve soon that I can read them. Especially Una Muno, uh, which is a really good Spanish writer that I'm looking forward to. But also other works uh, from the Spanish literature or Spanish speaking um, literature. Um, because some of the books are from Spain, others are from Latin America. These small editions of the Tales and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel uh, Hawthorne. Uh, I haven't read these editions. And I also have the Spanish like lookalike. It's a little bit different from these editions, but uh, it looks almost the same. And the El Jugador. Uh, by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Yeah, still have to read this one. It was very cheap. <laughs> I bought it for one euro. Then I have some like small uh, ornaments then here th like most of these books i haven't read i have Herman's has uh, fairy tales i have to read this one uh siddhartha this one i have read it's a, such a beautiful book calming peaceful spiritual i i loved it and it's very short but there's like a whole big story and world in there endless like you're reading it and it feels like you have read a whole volume of books so, so i really like his writing and then i have a lot of writers that i still haven't discovered like joseph roth philip roth uh thomas mann i still have to read all of these books um the ones that i have read is um the metamorphosis by franz kafka but it's just a short story i really did like it but it's like one day read and then the alienist and older stories of 19th century brazil by machado do assis also really good short stories and i really like reading short stories so that's why i have a lot of short stories collections this one uh, i really want to read it's uh, slaughterhouse 5 by kurt vonnegut but i haven't read it yet and i have another book from miguel de unamuno uh, about uh, latin america sobre latin america and this one is also in spanish so yeah most of these books i will start reading when my spanish improves in the back i have um, more books by gabriel garcia marquez but then in dutch so i still have to work on this uh, shelf to read <laughs> more books on here the same goes for this shelf it's also uh, mostly literature in the back i do have some uh, dutch books from my school years that i've read but here i have mostly books that i didn't read i have franz kafka the process also in the back still have to read it though <laughs> and recently i've purchased this beautiful edition by isabel Allende that contains hija de la fortuna retrato and sepia and la casa de los espíritus and these books are related, so that's why they're in the same um, 
like edition uh, in the same box, but I still have to read all of them. So um, I'm waiting till my Spanish is improved and then I'm very excited to start reading this one. I love her writing. So far I've only read Eva Luna, but uh, it was amazing. So I hope the rest of the books will also be uh, just as interesting. And I have also got as a present from my father uh, this book, which is uh, Paraiso uh, by Abdul Razak Gurna, who won the Nobel Prize of Literature in 2021. Uh, and this book is about uh, like African culture and uh, the writer himself is from Tanzania. So I'm very excited uh, to read this one as well. And I also have here Ulysses, which I haven't read. And this one edition is in Dutch, but I think if I will start reading it, I will like to read it in English. Uh, Bitch by Elizabeth Wurzo. I have started this one, but I haven't finished. And then a book by George Eliot, Stendhal. Yeah, a lot of writers that I still have to discover. Then one shelf down, I have all the literary works, The Catcher to Ride. This one I have read. Uh, I didn't really, really like it. It was good. I think I would have liked it more like 10 years ago or when I was like a teenager. But for now, it was fine. And then The Handmaid's Sale by... Margaret Antwood. This one I have started but never finished. Unfortunately, I used to do that with a lot of my books, so uh, it has been years ago that I was reading it, so I have to start over again if I would like to finish it. Then I have a, like all the stories from Thousand and One Night, and it's quite a beautiful edition, I think. It's in Dutch as well. And Robert Louis Stevenson from Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. I have recently read Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, but these are also older stories. Uh, but I read it in English, so uh, this one. Uh, I don't know if I will start reading it in Dutch, though. I think I will buy the English version of his uh, older works. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. These are poems. Uh, I haven't started reading it. James Baldwin. I read another book from him and then I purchased this one. Um, but I still have to finish it. Giovanni's Room. Then Ronald Giphart. Uh, this book I have read multiple times. I really liked it as a teenager. Then Charles Dickens. Still have to read it. Uh, Disgrace. Uh, Fountainhead and then uh, also Jumpa Lahiri. I hear a lot of good things about her writing so I'm very excited to start this one as well. In the back I have some other uh, like Dutch literature but also world literature uh, but most of them I still have to read. Then Japanese books. Here I have my Haruki Murakami collection. This box by Musaji. Uh, I haven't Musashi. This is book one and book two but I have to read this like epic um, adventure story. Kokoro by Natsumi Soseki. This one I really loved. I read it in 2020. Um, it's one of my favorite books from Japanese literature. And I have also I am a cat in Dutch. But this is only part one and I still have to buy the part two. Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. I really like this edition. These are the Dutch editions but they're so beautiful. I have another one and uh, this one is also by Yasunari Kawabata. But I really like this beautiful cover. So uh, this one I still have to read. And in the back, I only have Haruki Murakami. Um, this one is also a book by Natsumi Soseki. And it's uh, the, um, the Spring uh, Equinox. But uh, I bought this one online. And I thought it would be in Japanese, which I wanted. But it turned out it is in Chinese. And I double checked it. The, the online store really said that it was in Japanese. So it wasn't my mistake. Uh, but it's in Chinese, so I, for now I can definitely not read it, but I really liked uh, having this book, so yeah, I didn't send it back. And then the rest is all Haruki Murakami, and most of these I still have to read. I read this one, which is his uh, like memoir on writing, uh, his tips and biography, I really liked it. Then I have also, let me see. I have also read his biography uh, on her, uh, yeah, the death of his father and his connection with his father. A Cat Left Behind, it is called Memories About My Father. I, I liked it. It's a quite a short book, but yeah, he reflected a lot on his childhood. And I also read After the Quake. I It's not very memorable for me, so um, yeah, I couldn't tell you what it is about right now. I read it, I think, uh, two years ago, but uh, it didn't really leave an impression. And then in the back, I have more books by him, um, After Dark. This one was pretty nice. The story takes place all in one night and it's quite good. The main character is just discovering the night 
uh, first going to uh, like a local cafe and meeting someone then going to a love hotel and just like meeting all these crazy characters i i enjoyed the, uh, this book uh, one of his first books uh which is uh, uh in dutch i don't know the english titles but uh these are the two books that I, he has published first and written first i didn't really enjoy it i read it just because i want to read all of his works but um Obviously, he has improved as a writer, and these ones were not for me, the stories. Then I started Kafka on the Shore, and I loved this book, but again, I didn't finish it. So I came around page, let me see, 359, and I don't know why I stopped. Uh, at that time, I was reading also other books and I just, yeah, I haven't finished it, unfortunately. So I want to restart it and read it from cover to cover. But it was really good. Then I have The Killing of the Commandator. I haven't read those, um, book one and two. And uh, Norwegian Wood, that one was my first book from Haruki Murakami, like an introduction into his work. And it, it is quite a depressing story. But I really like the characters and how they interact with each other and uh, his writing. So that was the book that got me into his writing. And then 1Q84, which is his trilogy. Uh, I have the complete trilogy all in one book, um, but I have to read it. So yeah, it's quite big. So I haven't started it yet. And um, I don't know when I'm going to start it. I, I actually was hoping to read it this year, but for now, I don't think it's going to happen. Then I have two books about cats by Hiro Arikawa, um, the, the traveling of a cat, I think it is called, and Takashi Hiraide, um, the cat. And I have two books by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, uh, Before the Coffee Gets Cold and Before, Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe. I only read the first one um, and I really didn't enjoy it all that much. It was a, like a totally uh, overhyped book and I, it was nice but it wasn't too deep and I didn't like the character descriptions and uh, they were quite uh, flat to me so I haven't started reading the second book. And yeah, that's it for this shelf. So we're going up again. Then here on the upper shelf, I have all of my Russian literature. Some of them are in Russian. Most of them are in Dutch. Uh, this one is from Chocolate, but I uh, like the cover. And this is the Red Square in Moscow with uh, the church on it. So yeah, I have all kinds of Russian writers in here. We have Chekhov, Dostoevsky. I have a couple of Dostoevsky. And here again, this is all Dostoevsky as well. Uh, then I have Google. Google. Uh, in Russian, also one book, Anatoly Rybakov, uh, Russian Folk Tales. This collection is in Russian and in English, so it's bilingual. I have Russian short stories uh, and in the back, some other Russian books. And I have to be honest, I haven't read much of Russian literature. So right now I'm reading The Brothers Karamazov. Uh, in Russian, but yeah, I still have to discover this shelf a lot. I have started reading Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol, but I haven't finished it. <laughs> and I did read his three short stories, like The Diary of a Madman, The Nose and The Coat. Those ones were really nice. Like, they're quite absurd stories, but there is uh, some logic behind it. So there is like commentary on the society, but they've written in a very absurd way. So I, I enjoyed the, the kind of writing. And in the back, I will show you, but most of them I haven't read. So in the back, I have uh, Russian literature in Russian. And let me see, Ivan Turgenev. Um, I still have to read one couple of other Russian books. The Heart of the Dog by Mikhail Bulgakov. That one I have read. Then I have a Russian version of Anna Karenina, Russian edition. Yeah, and just a lot of Tolstoy that I still have to read. Pushkin in Russian and Dr. Zhivago. So here we still have a lot of books that I uh, have to discover and just have to read a lot more of the Russian literature. Mostly I read uh, Japanese literature or yeah, English language literature. So from America or England, but I still have to... Uh, read from Russia. So this video is taking a lot of time, so I try to move a little bit faster uh, through the books. Uh, here I have also literature and I have here um, a copy of Alice in Wonderland, which is one of my favorite fairy tales. But this one is in Spanish. I do have 
English version as well, but it's downstairs. Then I have also here the annotated Alice, which is Alice in Wonderland, but then with notations and margins from Lewis Carroll. It's quite interesting. These are some postcards from Alice in Wonderland that I have found on the book fair. And one of my other favorite books of all time is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and I have read it in uh, Dutch, but this is the English edition. Then in the back I have a couple of other Russian books. This is Demons by Fyodor Dostoevsky and then uh, Anna Karenina again, but then in Dutch. And yeah, some other books, literary works that I still yeah have to read. I have here also Jane Austen. And this is the copy of Jane Eyre that I have read. So it's less beautiful. Uh, than the Pink and Classic edition. It's quite an old book, but because it's an edition of my first time read of Jane Eyre, I uh, keep it. I don't think I had any like notes in it from the first time reading, but yeah, I still like to have this edition. And this is the one that I will read soon, hopefully. And I haven't read Shirley yet, but uh, I would like to read all of Charlotte Bronte's books, so um, hopefully soon. Then I have an entire shelf only for philosophy books and history. So these are two history books by Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, it's quite a popular history book, Sapiens. I still have to read it and the, this is the second part. This one I have started it, but um, yeah, then I stopped reading it. So I think I'm going to read Sapiens first and then the second book. But this is all philosophy because I'm also studying philosophy and I've collected quite some uh, books about the, the matter. So the ones that I've read are a part of this book, not everything, uh, but it's just on Liberty by John Stuart Mill. I had to read it for my classes. Uh, on Anarchism by Noam Chomsky. This one I really loved reading and I have finished it. Then The Elements of Moral Philosophy. This one I also had to read for class. It's quite a nice book. Then I have an introduction to the philosophy of science by Ken Staley. This one I had to read for class as well. And I haven't finished that course last year, so I'm going to finish it this year, so I would have to reread it. It is quite a challenging book to read, I have to say. Especially if you're not familiar with uh, like the philosophy of science, then it's quite challenging. Then I have another book by uh, Noam Chomsky, Understanding Power, but I have to read this one. Um, but I like this writing, so that's why I've purchased it. And in the back I have Western Philosophy by Anthony Kenny. That one I have used to write my essays, some of my essays. Um, so I haven't read the entire book, but I have used it. And The Philosophy of Demons, The Way of the Mountain. So most of the books in the back I haven't read. Uh, I have one book in Japanese, uh, and this is um, a book that I also have in English and it's about the English language and how it influences other languages or like takes over all the languages but I haven't read it and I think I will read the English version first and when my Japanese will improve I will try to read this one but it's quite complex and then in the back I have some history of philosophy and a book by Anne Rand about why we need philosophy uh, I hear a lot of good things about her writing but yeah I couldn't say much more now. And then the last shelf in this row contains um, Japanese books, but also books about Japan. So I have here um, the history of Japan. And I have a couple of books by Western writers that wrote about Japan, fiction or non-fiction. And one of my most recent reads is uh, this one. Chris Broad, Abroad in Japan. He's a YouTuber. I have made a book review from this book. I really enjoyed it. And it's just like his memoir of his 10 years in Japan so far. Uh, it's a really good book to read, especially if you've been once to Japan. It's nice to reminisce about your uh, memories. This one I've read years ago, uh, The Century of the Cherry Blossoms by Miki Sakamoto. And I know I really liked it, but I don't really remember the story anymore. I know it's like a generation story. Um, but um, yeah, I would like to reread this one day because I, I loved it. And this shelf does not only contain Japanese books uh, or books about Japan, it also contains Korean, Chinese and older Asian literature, literature books. Um, so I have also a book from a Chinese writer, Mo Yang. Uh, this one I haven't read, but I hear that it's quite heavy and it's about China in the 
1930s. I don't know much about China yet, unfortunately, so I would like to read it. Then another Chinese writer, Liu Yichan, The Cockroach and Other Stories. These are short stories. And these are two contemporary literature from Japan, uh, The Factory and uh, Strange Weather in Tokyo. These ones I have both read. Um, but I cannot say that I really love them. They were fine, but um, it's not very memorable. I liked The Strange Weather in Tokyo a little bit more than The Factory, actually. Um, then Shus Shusaku Endo, uh, Silence. This one is, of course, a very famous work from Japanese literature, but I have to read it. And uh, Min Jin Li, uh, Han. It's quite a big book, uh, very beautiful. And I purchased it because I read her other work, Pachinko, and I loved it. So I wanted to read more from her. And um, yeah, this one is in Dutch. And she's a Korean writer. And in the back, I have a book about traveling in China with the train. And also a Korean piece of literature, Human Acts, by Han Kan. I really like this one. It's uh, very heavy as well. And it's about a uh, student uprising in Korea uh, against the government. Um, so yeah, a lot of things happen in this book. And in the back, I have uh, other Korean uh, literature with which I have read. Um, like I said, Pachinko. Really beautiful book. It's a generation story about a girl um, living in Korea and then moving to Japan and building her life there and about how Koreans were treated in Japan and how they uh, build their society there. Then I have Kim Ji-yong, uh, born in 1982. This is more about the woman position in Korea. So this one, uh, I started reading it and it was also quite popular. A lot of people were reading it and I only I think liked the ending of the book it was really well written the ending and the rest of the book was a little bit yeah I don't know it, it wasn't entirely uh, my thing to read but I, I like the ending it's quite strong and then A Bird by Oh Jun Hee this one is very memorable <laughs> so it's about two children that are on their own their parents don't have any time for them the mother uh, like left them with the father and the father is only working so they have to figure things out for themselves and they are quite young and of course it uh, doesn't go so well and it's a very depressing book it it ends horribly uh and the whole story is like this dark cloud over you when you're reading it uh so yeah i i enjoyed reading this piece of literature because it shows a part of the society that we wouldn't like to see uh but it exists um but it was it was a very heavy book to read but yeah i would recommend it though it's uh, i think a big part of korean literature and in the back i have some other books from chinese writers and one of korean short stories but those i haven't read yet and then we will move to the last row of this bookshelf here i have all of my Tolkien books it's not a super big collection but um yeah i tried to keep all of my Tolkien books uh, on this shelf we have The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, of course, uh, Beer and Luthien, Silmarillion. This is a book about Tolkien. Uh, so not written by him, but about him, like a biography. I have a beautiful edition of The Hobbit in the back that I recently purchased. This one is with illustrations. And I also have an illustrated edition of the hobbit like a cartoon a guidebook for the hobbit and tolkien's bestiary and in the back also two editions of the dutch lord of the rings version that we have yeah and the hobbit in dutch and some other writings so um yeah i have a lot of uh, editions on the hobbit because that's one of my favorite books of all time as well yeah and then together with this uh editions of tolkien and I have one more edition, like book set of Lord of the Rings downstairs, which I will show you later. One shelf down, we have adventure and science fiction. Here I have um, all of my science fiction books. And this one, I Am Legend, I recently read. Then we have also Roadside Picnic by Arkady and Barry Strugatsky. This one I have also read. But this two in the middle, I still have to read. I have a couple of books by Ursula Le Guin. I haven't read those. Um, I have purchased them as a child um, years ago, but uh, never come around to read them. I have uh, Harry Potter, one uh, book one in Spanish and in um, Russian. 
Uh, this one my husband uses to learn Russian, and this one I use to learn uh, Spanish. I think Harry Potter books are great for that uh, because, yeah, we already know the story if you've read it. It's not too difficult. It is quite challenging to read it in Japanese, though, but in Spanish, it's uh, it's better. Then this book, I really don't know what the story is about, but this was the first book that I've read in English entirely. And at that time, it was quite challenging and I was so proud of myself that I had finished it. I read it during a vacation and I think I was like 14, 15 years old. Yeah, something something like that. Um, so yeah, I kept this book, but I uh, really don't know what the story is about anymore. It was like this teenage drama about a girl going to a boarding school, but um, with with some supernatural elements. Uh, but yeah, this was the first book that I've read in English, so it's uh, it was a very proud moment for me at the time. Then this is like a retelling of Russian folk tales, fairy tales. I haven't read it yet. But it's like focused on Russian mythology and then put in a like a fiction novel. I'm quite excited to read it and I think the cover is very beautiful uh, and I hear a lot of the good things about the story so hopefully there are other books as well. I think there are part there is part two and three to this book uh, but I only have this one. Then in the back I have an entire Harry Potter series in English. Uh, it's still in plastic because I read all of my Harry Potter books in Dutch when I was a teenager and I lent those from uh, the library. So the only book that I actually owned at that time was this one, which is, uh, I think, yeah, it's for part six. So this is the Half Blue Prince, Harry Potter and the Half Blue Prince. Oh, and in the back, I also have another Harry Potter in Dutch. Um, I think the seventh, part seven. So yeah, that's that for fantasy and sci-fi. One shelf down, I have all of my uh, legends, mythology around the world, and just like uh, books about spiritu spirituality, mythology, legends, and all kinds of stories. I have myths for children from India, Japanese myths, fantastic stories from Japan, Celtic myths and legends, Japanese myths again, uh, 100 mythological figures. Uh, again, Japanese stories, Treasure of China, Wisdom, and then I have a couple of history books about the history of uh, Byzantium, a uh, history about Russian politics. I don't know if I will read this one, actually. I don't, I'm don't. i not really into politics, but I, I have this one uh, about the Krim War. So yeah, I don't know when I will start reading this too. Um, this is also a history book and A New History of the World by Peter... Franco Pan, The Silk Roads. This one I'm, I am excited about. So so the history books that I would like to read uh, soon is this one and also Sapiens. And then the last shelf, uh, more Japanese books. And here we have writers that I still have to read. So I have read Kanzabura Oe, uh, both of these books, I think. For sure this one. I have also read If uh, Cats Disappear from the World and... Uh, Life of a Geisha by Mineko Iwasaki, which is a biography. And this book, very interesting, is like the answer uh, for Mineko Iwasaki to the book by Arthur, let me see, Arthur Golden, uh, The Diary of a Geisha. So this book was inspired on one of the most famous geishas of Japan at the time, which was Mineko Iwasaki. But she didn't like his uh, yeah, work of fiction. So she wrote her own book, uh, which is more a biography. I like them both. So I did really enjoy The Diary of a Geisha, but I also liked her biography. It's very interesting to read about her life as a geisha. Then a book by Banana Yoshimoto. This one I have started, but never finished. I read uh, all the books by her, which is Kitchen. I didn't like that one and also Moshi Moshi and that one I really loved. So yeah, I'm still not sure what I think of her writing. Uh, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. So I still have to read this one and some other of her works. And in the back I have a couple of art books and uh, also books about Japan. And this is just a game that I have bought but never played, um, Hanabi Koji. But I think the cover of this uh, board game is quite nice so I put it here as decoration. 
So this was everything from this bookshelf. Now we will move downstairs to the living room. It's a quite smaller bookshelf. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I have a lot of books that I haven't read yet. So this is like my personal library and I can always go upstairs, pick a book and read something new. Okay, so now we are downstairs and here I have my bookshelf and also my reading corner. So I actually always read on the couch. I have a reading corner where you can find my language learning books uh, and uh, workbooks, my notebooks uh, and also the things that I'm currently reading. So here I have my kanji uh, workbook that I'm using right now and my Spanish grammar book, but this one I haven't used, you know, uh, take a week or two. But yeah, these are the ones that I'm using for language learning. My two language learning notebooks, one for Japanese and one for Spanish. My reading supplies, which are in here. I have here some uh, bookmarks, um, post-its, things like that. Then I have all of my journals. I have my YouTube journal where I plan my YouTube videos, uh, my daily journal, a book journal that I'm still finishing up and another book journal. And here I also write down all the titles of the books that I've read or want to read. So like uh, TBR, I will show you very quickly. It looks like this. Uh, so here we have all the books that I want to read or have red so it's quite just a simple design oh and this is one of my favorite bookmarks from um, Stephen King and then the current reading pile so here I have my Kindle I'm using it mostly for language learning and this is the book that I'm currently reading spillover it's a non-fiction about infectious diseases and pandemics uh, really interesting one but I have been reading this one for a very long time and I'm still not far in uh, but I'm a slow non-fiction reader then I have my uh, Russian edition of the Brothers Karamazov that I'm also reading right now. And I just finished reading Dr. Tcheko and uh, Mr. Heights. This is a notebook that I'm using for my Spanish reading uh, notes, mostly vocabulary that I'm learning. And this one I just recently got from my father as a present. So it doesn't contain much now, but I'm trying to write down all the vocabulary that I'm encountering during reading in Spanish. Uh, this is my Kobo e-reader and I have multiple books on here that I'm still trying to read uh, in multiple languages, but I'm mostly using my Kindle now. Then this is the book that I am going to read soon. Uh, it's from the A Game of Tomes book club, uh, Orlando by Virginia Woolf. I think it was the read of July. And this is the Bible, uh, but this one I'm reading very slowly and I'm reading it for literary purposes because the Bible is obviously very influential for all other fiction works, uh, especially from the Western literary works. And right now I've read a little bit of the introduction and some passages, so not a lot. Then another book in Spanish that I'm currently reading. Uh, this one I'm reading together with my father. He has also the same edition and he bought this one for me in Spain. So uh, it's a classical work from Spanish literature. Uh, and this edition is from the University of Salamanca. Then a book about Japan by uh, Emily Notom. She is a Belgian writer and she has lived in Japan. And this is a fictional work uh, on working in Japan. Um, the main character is uh, very interesting and funny. And I have seen the movie like years ago and I loved it. I have seen it in Russia and I was like maybe 15, 16 years old. And I forgot the title. So after finding it and realizing that it was a novel, I uh, had to read it. So I recently started reading it. It's not very big, so I think I will finish it tonight. This is uh, Simon Blackburn's um, Introduction to Philosophy. And uh, it sounds like it should be easy, but it's quite a difficult book. There are a lot of concepts and background that you kind of have to have to understand it, even though it's an introduction. It uh, does tackle a lot of difficult subjects in philosophy. And so far it's interesting, but I have to uh, read more in it. Then the book that I'm reading in Japanese. This one is Fushiki de Gashiya, uh, Zenitendo. It's a very long title, but it's this weird candy shop. And there are short stories in here that are all related to the candy shop. And uh, yeah, to show you the process, this is how I'm reading. So it's going very slowly. I have to look a lot of things up and um, I'm like reading one page at a time, maybe two pages on a good day. So it will take me a while to get through it. But if I get through it, it will be the first book that I will read in Japanese entirely from cover to cover. So I'm very excited. 
then another book in Spanish, El Principito. But here I also have to look up sometimes some words and um, I'm reading it slowly, but it's a lot easier than Japanese, obviously. And then a book for reading and learning Japanese, which is, uh, yeah, learning Japanese with haikus. Haikus written by Basho, um, which is a very famous poet in Japan. They show you the haiku. You can scan this QR code and hear also the, uh, the audio of the haiku. And there are uh, the, the words in the haiku are explained. So, and the translation of the haiku is also provided. And it is written by Clay and Yumi. Now we will move to the bookshelf itself. And then the bookshelf. So here I have all most like beautiful books that I have uh, from editions from Penguin Classics, Deluxe, and yeah, quite interesting books that I still. Most of them still have to read. <laughs> Peter Pan, have never read that one. A Homage to Catalonia. And then Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. I have this beautiful edition of Lafcardia Hearns uh, of Ghosts and Goblins. I'm very excited for that one. And I actually want to start reading it in October, but we shall see. And then the Penguin <laughs> Book of Christmas Stories, also a very beautiful edition. And this one I want to read in December this year. I have my Bronte Sister box containing Villette, Wuthering Heights, Jane Eyre and the Tenant of uh, Wildfell Hall. I have only read Jane Eyre so far, so uh, I still have to read The Older Sisters. I have Middlemarch, Great Expectations, uh, Fitzgerald's Tender is the Night, and Moby Dick. Then one shelf under, I have all of my Penguin Classics edition. The ones that I have read, I tried reading Animal Farm a couple of years ago, but then I stopped. And now I want to reread it again this year. Clockwork Orange I have read, uh, Passage, uh, Passage to India I have not, and The Communist Manifesto, which is a very small like Penguin uh, edition. Uh, this one I haven't read either. Then the Tales of uh, Heike. Um, no idea what this one is about, but uh, it's like a, uh, <laughs> Japanese literature and I wanted to read it one day. Uh, then uh, the Book of Tea, also from Japan. The Tales of uh, Ise. The Penguin Book of Haiku. This one is also very interesting. I have to start reading it. Macbeth. This one is a thrifted edition and uh, it contains some notes from the previous reader, which I don't mind. I, I like reading um, other ones notes and marginalia, so that's fine. Then I have Japanese ghost stories by Lefkadia Hearn, uh, Natsumi Soseki Sanshiro, uh, the Penguin Book of Japanese Short Stories. This one is also high on my list to read. And I have the complete Dante's Defying Comedy. Uh, this one is still in plastic and I Hope to read it next year. Elizabeth Gaskell, A Life of Charlotte Bronte, which is a biography of Charlotte Bronte. Um, very excited for that one too. John Milton's Paradise Lost. Uh, Lewis Carroll, Alice Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. The Black Tulip by Dumas. And Against Nature by Huismans. This one is interesting. I have only heard of this writer and bought this book because I was reading Submission by Michelle Hollebeck. And I didn't like submission but uh, he was mentioning Huisman's book all the time so I uh, purchased it to see if it, this book is better than uh, Michelle Hallebeck's book. The Republic by Plato which is a work of uh, philosophical work. I have most of my philosophical books upstairs on the shelf that I just showed you but the Penguin Classics I keep in here. Then another box set of The Lord of Rings that I have and this one I'm currently reading so here I make my notes and um, this is the one that I'm reading and I only have to read the last book. And I have a collection of all the books from uh, Junji Ito that I buy. Uh, so far I have Uzumaki, which I've read. Tomie. I only watched the anime. I haven't read uh, the manga. Gyo. This one I've read too. And Shiver. Then I have uh, Carmilla. This one I want to read in October this year together with Dracula. Both are vampire stories. And here I kind of keep all the books that I want to read uh, in the like the nearby future and when I'm done with it I usually move them upstairs in the older shelves. The goal is that this entire shelf will be also filled with Penguin classics. So but for now we have all the books here too. This is non-fiction about women in literature especially uh, in uh, horror literature. Then The Stranger by Albert Camus. This one I have also recently bought because it's part of the A Game of Thrones book club. Then James Joyce The Dubliners. Um, very beautiful edition. 
Then Rilke poems in German on the road by Jack Kerouac, Ray Bradbury, Fahrenheit 451, and then again Penguin Classics and my copy of Alice in Wonderland, which is beautifully illustrated. So I also have the Penguin edition, and uh, upstairs I showed you my older editions, but this one is the uh, 150 year anniversary edition. And uh, this was the one that I'm going to read in uh, also September. I'm planning to read it in September. I have two books by Nietzsche, one by The Car, which I have read for my philosophy classes, and The Penguin Book of Hell, uh, which I have also recently read, and it's a very interesting book. It contains texts uh, throughout the history uh, describing hell from a Christianity perspective, but also the ancient perspectives and the modern ones. It took me almost two years to read it. Then another shelf that I have here uh, contains, uh, this one should move upstairs, this is Ernest Hemingway, Farewell to Arms, really good book. But I have to move it upstairs to the literature shelves because, yeah, I'm done with it. This is the book that I'm currently reading that I just showed you in Japanese. And this is the, <laughs> the second part. Also, uh, The Little Prince in Japanese uh, and some other Japanese books that I have. And these are Chinese bookmarks. Uh, my Neighbor Totoro uh, from the anime My Neighbor Totomo Totoro by... Um, Miyazaki and I bought this one for my daughter to read together but for now she's too young for it so hopefully soon we will read it together some Stephen King bookmarks and the box set of A Game of Thrones or like A Son of Ice and Fire it's called I've read the first book and in December I will start second book so far it's a very interesting uh, series I like it I liked the um, tv show as well but the book is far more better so i have the iliad uh, by homer i haven't read this one graffiti grains bow jorge borges collected fictions i'm very excited to read this one as well uh i hear it he has a lot of like great magical realism so uh, maybe i will read a couple of stories soon Ruth ozeki's a tale of the time being i bought this one with the intention of read it soon but then i didn't uh, come around to it so far so it's still in here then i have a ghost story by peter straub which is also a book that I hear a lot of good things of. Uh, no Longer Human by Osamu Dazai. And this one I want to read together with the manga, like I said. Then I have The Terror uh, by Dan Simmons. I watched the show and I really liked it. So I wanted to read the book as well, but so far I have not read it. Hannah Arendt, who is a philosopher, uh, The Origins of Totalism. I read some of her work for my philosophy studies, but I haven't uh, read this book. Litwana Alexeyevich uh, with Chernobyl Prayer. Also a book that I hear a lot of good things about. And I always have been interested in Chernobyl and the whole uh, incident there. Then a book by James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time. Uh, this contains multiple essays. It's a very good book. Uh, it's about people um, and, of course, all the important subjects that surround people, from love, friendship to... Yeah, racism and uh, violence. So a lot of things that you write about religion as well. Very interesting to read and quite short, but there's a lot in here. Uh, the same goes for Khalil Gibran, the, prof the prophet. Totally different book, but also a great writing. And it also touches on the human condition, on spirituality and on the knowledge of life. And then 1984 by George Orwell. I started reading it on my e-reader, but then didn't finish. So now I want to read the physical copy. Then moving on to the last two bookshelves. Here uh, I have most of my cooking books. So that's not very interesting. Uh, and also some of the uh, children books for my daughter. Um, some of them are Russian, others are in English so uh, and Dutch. We have all kinds of languages that we're reading together. But yeah, cooking books and children books. And also my copy of House of Leaves, which I'm also currently reading. It's a reread. I have read it before. But yeah, the second time, it's still difficult to get through it. It's a very good book. It's one of my favorite ones of all time. But it's a very heavy book to read. And then the last shelf, it's uh, quite empty. Some books that I'm currently reading or just don't know where to put. <laughs> so this one is a very beautiful edition of Botanical Curses and poisons is just like all kind of plants and how they are used and like the, the poisonous plants but i haven't read so much in it i have read a couple of plants and it's just like something to go through once in a while then i have this art book about tokyo but i this one i have found thrifted yeah it's just 
pictures of Tokyo. And I have uh, 15 short stories by Anton Chekhov. Uh, these ones are in Dutch. And uh, yeah, it's a very nice edition. And my copy of uh, War and Peace in Russian. I have started reading it, but uh, haven't finished it. So it's a high on my TBR as well. For now, this was everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, tour of my books. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Goodbye.